and hello, 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 hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I took it myself when I do that old stupid shit, honey. But y'all, y'all seem to, and y'all, y'all tickle me because y'all like it all the time. But okay, that there was cool, honey. That's cool. Hello, all of you, honey. Welcome to another installment of the Donut Factory Chronicles and the Commentaries, darling. So I want you guys to get into this and get into it real cutely and carrying on. Now I'm going to put my website and stuff down here in the comments section. I want you guys to go to my website and check it on out. www.dishingtea.com to learn everything about me. Well, not everything, but a lot of stuff about me. <laughs> uh, and where you can find out about the radio show, about my books, Awakenings, Epiphanies, Along the Spiritual Journey. And... Um, Revelations, affirmations, and confirmations. You can also find out about my my uh, fragrance oils and why did this thing freeze? Okay, there we go. You can find out about my fragrance oil line, uh, Sensuality, and you can find out how you get how you can purchase sample packets because I try to describe what they smell like is a little difficult. You can uh, purchase uh, your sample packages and carry it on, and then from there you can order uh, your your fragrances and some things. Um, yeah. So, uh, we're going to get into this and carry it on because, as, as you see, I've termed this terms of, termed this, I've titled today Terms of Endearment. And this here is in direct response <laughs> to the uh, podcast or YouTube video that I saw. Well, you know. Y'all know I have this love-hate relationship going on with Monique, the uh, Academy Award winner Monique, and her husband, Sidney Hicks, okay? Now, I thought that I was going to be done because, you know, she got her residency and carrying on, and I saluted her and things, you know, I'm because I, I really am team Monique. I really am because uh, I adore her. I love her talent. I love her as a person. Uh, for the most part, but I just think that, you know, since all this backlash she's been going through, I really believe that now she is perpetuating a lot of shit onto herself. Now, let me take a, uh, wait a minute. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, to steal a line, honey, from Otis Mack, honey, Hollywood's heavy diva. I love it when he said, excuse me, uh, for my indulgence. Uh, no, he says, excuse my indulgence. I need to put up, that's a cute little, I love when he says that. This here is tea. And, uh, what is it? Tea and, um, what's the shit? The Gatorade, yeah. Okay. So now, I'm here because up on YouTube, their last uh, podcast that they do, uh, Monique and Sydney's Open Relationships, they did a talk, or they were in direct, um, whatever, about the fact that Oprah Winfrey, Gail King, and Ava DuVernay, director, hold on, I knew that was going to happen. Oh, wow, okay. Copy that. Y'all know I'm at the Donut Factory, honey. Uh, no menus. All right. So, what is going on? Why does this thing keep freezing? Shit. So, uh, like I said, Oprah, Gail, and Ava have gotten onto this thing to where they went public and said that they do not like to be called auntie. Okay? Now, as you all know, honey, auntie has become like the new catchphrase. Everybody's, everybody's somebody's auntie. Hey, auntie. Hey, auntie. You know, and this, that, and the other blase yakety spleen. 
All right, that's cute. That's cute. Now, here's the thing. We have started saying that, you know, it, it was it was picking up a little bit, but it didn't get a lot of teeth until after Black Panther, the movie. Because when Killmonger come and, and it was discovered, honey, that he's uh, really part of the tribe, and he was the son of the brother of the, the king and this, that, and the other. You know, he's a hi, auntie. You know, and then all of a sudden, now everybody, you know, auntie has become like the, the, the new little catchphrase. And that's lovely. So Oprah and Gail said that, and, and Ava have said they don't like being called that. Well, I only listen. Now listen, I, it was an hour long. I listened to thirty minutes of it because I was like, okay, I cannot, and 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 I heard enough. Okay, because right after that time they started taking phone calls. And see, when they start taking their phone calls or whatever, and you start listening to the people, it starts to get on my nerves because what ends up happening is you have those who are your champions and those who you know they they your team, team whoever. Just like a lot of you, let, let me use me for example. If y'all are team Big Meech, that's lovely. And if you agree with me and agree for my cause of carrying on, y'all know, you know, it's been some shit and stuff that Monique has been going through. Everybody then wants to sit down there and all of their comments start to sound like they're kissing your ass to agree with you. And so everything that was coming out of these callers' mouths was starting to get on my nerves because it was like, you know, they just wanted to be on the radio or wanted to say something just to say they were in agreement. And, well, hell, I don't even know why we all look at Oprah and stuff like that. She ain't never been my auntie, so I I wouldn't even call her auntie to begin with. And, you know, it's all of those stupid shit, okay? And my thing becomes this. It's twofold because I'm going to get into what they broke this down because they, they tied this into something. First off, how in the hell did this become a fucking conversation? Okay? To sit down there and to say, I don't like being called whatever the vernacular is. Okay? Don't call me that. Okay, why is this a problem? Now, what we have here. Monique and Sydney decided that their rationale for all of this is to say that Oprah and Gail and Ava, but, but, but I want you to pay attention though, because they didn't, they didn't really harp on Ava a lot. They harped on Oprah. They harped on Oprah. And then they sat up there and said that Gail, basically they, they said Gail is a flunky. And you know, she's just doing it because her and Oprah are best buddies and they Judy girlfriends or whatever. So she's just doing it because, okay. Um, they're harping on this and they're like, well, listen, you know, to say auntie, that's a term of endearment. We as black folks, we've been doing this for centuries. And, you know, this is how we acknowledge our elders. This is how we acknowledge the those who uh, made a commitment and things. So, um... You know, so for her to not want to be called that, is she part of the community? Is she part of, uh, uh, has she turned her back on blacks? And this, basically, it becomes this whole thing of a lot of folks, and especially all of you motherfucking power to the people children. Y'all get on my nerves with folks are not doing what you think they should be doing with their money or what they think they should be doing for the black community or whatever. Y'all always sit up there and say, I want to, ch- I want to challenge someone's blackness. Yes, open up. She done worked hard to get to where she is and to have the kind of money that she has. Okay? We don't know all that she does with her money because she doesn't go public like that. All we know is we know all that she does. When she did the Oprah show, she did all the fucking giveaways and shit. We know that she built the school over there in Africa for all the girls, and they, there's a free scholarship. They ain't paying for nothing over there, okay? We know that she did this, she did this, she did this. A lot of you bitches want to sit down there and say, oh, well, she did a lot of this for the white folks. None of y'all talked about when she came down here to, uh, what was it? Was it Augusta? Augusta, Georgia, and she did the giveaway down here because Augusta, Georgia, which is a, 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 a damn near predominantly black town, has been the, the show 
that had kept her ratings in the in the loop. Augusta has always had the strongest ratings throughout her 25 years of being on TV. And so she went down to Augusta with damn near door to door almost to get the folks to come out. And everybody who came to, to Augusta, she did the little giveaways and did all that. All, okay, and then y'all want to sit down there and say, oh, well, she just did that because, you know, that was a, Augusta's a poor town. And then, What the fuck did you want from her? Why is it that we as people feel as though because somebody got that they supposed to give it to your motherfucking ass? Huh? Why do we do that as people? Why do we feel that just because someone else has that because they're not spending their money the way you think they ought to spend it, that they're supposed to do it your way. That they're supposed to do it in the way that you see fit to, to make you feel good, to make you think that they are a good person and this, that, and the other. We don't know what she does in secret. We don't know what she does in private. We don't know what she does with her money anywhere else. So why is it that it's anybody else's motherfucking business? Are we all jealous because she got it, we don't? Okay, she is one person. Yes, we know the problem. There are millions and millions of problems everywhere, honey. Now, I know recently she has she's done something for her hometown. I know she's done something educational for her hometown and bought books and stuff down there for the school system. She just recently did that. And it's something else she did for her hometown. And y'all know she come from the gut bucket parts of uh, Mississippi and carrying on. So... That there is the first thing about we always in her motherfucking purse and always in her motherfucking bag and you know, trying to find out what she's supposed to do. Now, this other thing about her being black, okay? Why is it that we always question how black she is, how in touch with the community she is, and this, that, and the other? Oprah faces the same racism and carrying on that we do. Just because she got money does not mean it does not go away and carry it on. As a matter of fact, child, it might be even worse because she got money and think they'll smile on her face, take her money, and then call her motherfucking nigga and carry it on behind her back. She said that one time, honey, during the show. She went to the store to to um uh uh to 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 get a purse. She wanted to go in and the folks didn't even know they wouldn't even buzz her in. They knew who the fuck she was. She was on TV every goddamn day. They didn't give a fuck. They did not buzz her in. Okay, they didn't want her, 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 her nigga money or whatever we're going to call it. They didn't want it. Okay, so it's not like she does not have her own and still deal with problems that we as black folks deal with. Now, going back to this whole thing of auntie and things, Monique and Sydney wanted to say that she's not in touch and that to not accept and to tell folks not to, you know, not to call her that or whatever. They are, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, I'm, I'm putting this my way. Y'all go listen to it and, 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 and get your own conclusion. But I'm going to say it like this. Uh, they sit up there and they're saying that basically, you know, her not accepting this term of endearment is basically her turning her back on folks and basically saying that she don't want to be bothered with black folks and she don't want to be bothered with the community and she don't want to be bothered this, that, and the other. Okay, and I'm so tired of that. See, here's where it is. Because listening to this, and like I said, I only listened to 30 minutes of it. It's, it's an hour long, okay? Oh, wait a minute. Hold, uh, hold on. Cole, I think me and you are going to have a hearty disagreement. Because I just see this. I'm, I'm going to read it out loud in a minute. Give me, let, let me finish this point. Then I'm going to come and say hello to everybody. I'm going to read these comments. Um... Uh, shit. I mean, I, wait a minute. I fucked up my, my comment. Let me go. Let me say hello to everybody. Because, yeah, Cole, you just put a, a, a paragraph up in here. And I think me and you finna great to have it. Uh, Jeremiah, hey, Clyde is up in here. Terry is up in here. Hey, Terry. What's going on, baby? Ruben is up in here. Uh, Cole, what you smoking, dude? I ain't smoking nothing, baby. I'm just sitting up here. Y'all know, that's my openings and stuff. And the opening is cute. Okay. Jerome, wow, you up in here? Hey, baby, what's going on? Cole, you say, what? Well, I was going to watch the movie, but this is better. Love you, homie. Okay, love you right back. Great film. <laughs> Thanks. Jupiter is here. Billy is up in here. Hey, nephew, what's going on? Walter is here. Marvin, hey, Marvin, what's going on? Jerome is here. Walter, you say, what? Well, thank you. And I never called anyone auntie besides my aunties. 
Also, I never had a big mama in my neighborhood, but I'm proud of who I am. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Tracy is here. Gus is here. Tracy, hey, Meech. Okay, Cole, here we go. What you say? You said, why? Because God wouldn't want anyone to live in stupid excess of wealth. It's her job to pass away with zero in the bank. Zero. That's what you're born with. That's what you're supposed to die with. Zero, period. Please, with that... Uh, uh, that you're jealous. I wouldn't trade places with anyone on earth. Cole, if you believe that, that's fine. But you're not going to sit down here and, and, and say that she's supposed to just give her fucking money away just because you think that that's what God said. You have to remember, honey, everybody who believes in God, their beliefs are very subjective. So what works for you don't work for everybody else. Okay, now let me go and I'm going to share this about a couple of things because see, oftentimes like all the giveaways are carrying on that she gives and this, that, and the other, when she said, she said this early on in her show, that she had to learn that even when she was giving away gifts, that the people were responsible for the taxes. And like when you on those game shows that came on, yeah, you won the shit, but you still had to be responsible for the taxes. So oftentimes, uh, when she said she learned that, so now when she did the giveaways and stuff, she picked up the taxes as well. Because she's like, why, if I'm going to give it to you, what the fuck am I going to have you pay for the taxes for? If it's supposed to be a gift. So here's the thing. Like I said, we do not know what the hell she does in her private life. And just because she has her money, that's hers. That's, how, that's what she did. That's what she earned. And remember this. If you want to sit down there and put God up into this, I'm supposed to give you everything that is the overflow from the cup. My cup is still full. So just because my cup is at $500 billion, don't get mad at that because that's my cup. Okay? Now, I'm giving you the overflow. And I'm giving out of that. I'm giving out of that. I'm giving out of that. So it doesn't... We could be upset and we could sit down there and criticize folks with their wealth and how they spend their money. I know I have I have my own little uh, glitches and stitches and carrying on when I see folks who I think spend their money frivolously. I can't stand to see folks that when, when we, when, you know, people, when we see these damn uh, hip hop shows and all this, that, and the other, they sit up there spending millions of dollars on these little toys and shit that they go crash and carrying on or can't afford later, you know? It's stupid, but hell, who am I to tell somebody how to spend their money? Okay, but we don't know what they do privately because see what happens, the sensationalism of all that is what folks get attached to. They get attached to the bullshit that, that the news media want to run to and carry it on. They want to run to this. Oh, when Robert Leach was alive and we did the lifestyles of the rich and famous, okay, and oh, they just spent $200,000 a night for this one hotel room or whatever because it was chic and posh. And for those who spent $1.5 million on their wedding and for those who spent $2.5 million on, on a statue that's going to break and they live out in California and, and, and the earth shakes and shit that's going to fall over and break. Doesn't make sense. However, that's their coin. Okay, and we can't be upset with how we feel celebrities or anybody make their money. Okay, um, wait a minute, I got more folks coming up in here. Howard is here. Hey, Howard, Philip, what's up, baby? What's up with you, Cole? You said celebrities with 100 million plus are in the Illuminati, are Mason's New World Order, uh, Tyler Perry. Wait a minute, Tyler Perry, Madonna, Tom Cruise, Bradley, anyone. Big, sold their soul to the devil to make it big. You want to label me as a conspiracy theorist? I am. Not all theories are false. And no, if you believe that is that one is true, then they all are. 9-11 was an indie job, 100%. <clears throat> an inside job. Okay, listen. We can sit down here and fuck with these theories all day. Now, I do believe that I know 9-11 was an inside job. They're not going to tell me that because our intelligence is too intelligent not to spot that. Okay. We, we we too intelligent not to spot that, to, to say that that was all outside job. We're not going to sit down there and say we got that fucking stupid and that lazy on the job that we let outside forces come in to infiltrate us. Because if we did that, then that means they would continue to do that, right? And carrying on. We, we No. And for those who don't want to believe that, that's shame on them. 
Everything else as far as this Illuminati shit, I don't believe the, in the Illuminati the way y'all trying to sell that Illuminati shit. Because if that's the case, then all the fraternities, all the sororities, and carrying on are all part of this illustrious Illuminati bullshit. Okay? They done sold their soul to the devil. Okay, that could be, I, I take that to be a, a figure of speech and not literal. Because you are your own devil. You are your own worst enemy. You are the ones who do not sit down and, and take responsibility or accountability for your actions. You want to put it on somebody else. And if you want to sit down there and go into the evils of the world and trample over and knock over and stab somebody in the back just to get ahead, then that there, honey, is the American way because business is set up that way. The capitalistic market is set up that way for those to succeed. So the Illuminati, as everybody want to say, is all demonic and carrying on. Yeah, we can call it all of that. But you are your own worst enemy with all that because you are the one to accept those terms. You are the one to sit down there and say, yes, this is the price I would pay to get here. Trample over people and not give a fuck about anybody. Okay, that's all of that. So those who got that kind of money, they have a machine behind them. Yes, they have people in their corner. Yes, to push that kind of shit. So it is what that is, sweetie. So all of that, we can't get mad because they did it. Because, see, um, are, are the dope dealers and, and carrying on part of the Illuminati, too? Because shit, a lot of them on the street corners of things, they're the ones sitting up there pushing shit and carrying on. So, so, so they got to be a part of it, too, right? You understand? See, see, all of this shit starts to sit down here. When are we going to get accountable and responsible for our own actions? You understand? If you decide that, that that's the life that you want to live and you want to lead or whatever, then fine. But don't come dragging everybody else down into it. And then we have to sit down there. If the children are making their coin, okay, if they're making their coin, and I'm gonna stay legally. Let me stay with the legal children, because the illegal children, honey, that's a different ball game. But the legal children, honey, who's sitting down there through blood, sweat, and tears, they're doing their shit. Why is it that we feel as though they're supposed to always give their shit away? Huh? Now, that there is a side note to, to all of this that's going on, because I truly believe that every time that we deal with people, particularly persons of color, who make coin, who, who are up in, in, you know, we got a, a, more people coming to that 1%, okay? And Oprah happened to be part of the, the 1% of the 1%, okay? Because she's up there. But it seems to me that every time we get people who start to make money and carry it on, that everybody now ha feels as though they have a uh, say or they could dictate about where their money is supposed to go. And if you're not power to the people, children, if you're not down here giving away turkeys every year, making sure folks get toys every Christmas and this, that, and the other, to be black and help out with the community and help with the struggle, if that's not what you're doing, then folks want to throw you away or they feel as though you're not down or you're not part of or you know forgot where you came from. Really? Really? Now, I was. I will say that 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 argument does have merit at times, because you get those who become so bougie, to where they act as if they don't know what a cockroach is. Bitch, you ain't gonna give me that. You're not gonna give me that when you come from from the project heifer, okay? And you were sitting up here stumping on roaches and carrying on just like I was, honey. And especially for those of you who live down here in Georgia, y'all know these big ass water bugs, honey, that's indigenous to Georgia. Honey, they everywhere, child, in the summertime and shit. You ain't gonna tell me you, you didn't get away from all that. They outside running in the streets and shit, them damn big-ass cockroaches. Okay, so you're not gonna tell me you don't know what the fuck that is. So every now and again, we will get into people who want to act bougie or act as if they have disconnected themselves. But I would, I, I can't, I'm trying to get this light right. I'm going to graduate and say this, that oftentimes... Folks want to live in their fantasy world and they forget about what the reality is. But just because someone is doing something bigger and better, okay, does not mean that they forgot where they came from. And because they're not doing what they money, what you feel they ought to do. Now, let me let me tie this back in. Going back to Monique and Sydney, again, I say this. 
Monique said in, in that somebody put in the comments, oh, here you go, y'all talking about Oprah again. How come y'all just can't leave that alone? Or why is it y'all feel as though you have to talk about it? She said, we have to talk about it because this is a conversation worth having if you're going to disconnect yourself from the community and carry it on. And, and basically, they were trying to call her black card. And my whole thing is this. This ain't got shit to do with her black card. This ain't got nothing to do with nothing. And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to send this to them, to her and Sydney, because they're going to hear this. I want you, Monique, sweetie, sugar. Sugar plum. Apple dumpling. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what I need for you to do is get the fuck up off this goddamn woman. Okay? That's what I need you to do. I need you to get up off of this because, see, what is happening is this. You still want to be vindicated. You want your name to be clear. And you need to have this conversation with her because she hurt you. Y'all heard me say this in the last videos I done said about your ass. She's hurt you and you feel as though you need to have a conversation with her. And because she ain't giving you the time of day, bitch, you doing every time something come up in the news media. You got to sit down there and if it's something against her, Y'all go on y'all motherfucking thing and y'all got to criticize her about any and everything. The Michael Jackson thing, yeah, I criticized her too because I, did, I didn't necessarily agree with those interviews or whatever because what, what she said, her point was it, she missed the mark for me. However, you criticize that, you criticize her not wanting to be called Auntie and Karen all. Bitch, you are doing everything that you can to get her. You're trying to bait her to have a conversation with you. You said you got a motherfucking phone number, bitch. What's going on with picking up the phone? Be like, hey, Oprah Gail Winfrey. That's her name. Oprah Gail Winfrey. Bitch, man, you need to have a motherfucking conversation. Don't be ducking me, ho. How come you can't go raw like that and make this personal? You understand? Y'all doing any and everything y'all can to force this woman to, to, to talk to y'all or to bring attention to you. See? And as far as I'm concerned, it ain't working because it's backfiring. All these simple attempts of one, now, now you want to say she ain't black. Well, no, you've been saying that from the jump. Because you said that when she made this, when she was talking about uh, Reese Taylor, at the, when she did the speech at the Oscars and she was given the, the, the award there. And you just had something to say about that. She had this beautiful speech there, but did she speak down at the, at the NAACP award? Did she come to the, to the Trumpet Awards and give these wonderful, did she talk about equality there? She ain't down for blacks, so why the fuck did she, if she ain't down for blacks, bitch, if she, are you saying she ain't down for blacks, or are you saying she ain't down for you because you a black woman? See, that's where all this, that's where the roots come in for me. Because that's a question I think you need to answer. And then you got your motherfucking right, daddy. Right, right, Hold on. Right, right. Copy that. You got your motherfucking daddy slash manager instead of their co-signing that bullshit when this ain't even got shit to do with him. This is between you and her. And you need to go handle that shit. This bullshit about Auntie can now hold on, bitch. Wait a minute. Because if you want to talk about a term of endearment, you the bitch, you the bitch, Monique, that sit down there in the Queens of Comedy and come out there calling bitches, bitch, 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 bitch. And you know motherfucking well, bitch is one of them words that'll get your ass kicked if it's said the wrong way. Because don't nobody want to be called bitch all the motherfucking time. But what did you say in the in the video? You said that, you know, I done said it and called you a whole bunch of bitches. I called you bitch, I said about 50,000 times. You know, but then you said, you know, hell, sometimes we act like that. And sometimes you need to be called that. And then sometimes it just completes the sentence. Because if you act like that, you're going to be called that. Shut the fuck up, bitch. It completes the sentence. That was your joke. So bitch is a term of endearment, bitch, that nobody likes to be called. Don't call me no bitch. You hear if I'm saying that all the time. So because she said, don't call me auntie, you want to sit there and say that now she ain't being black. Bitch, what is this? What the fuck is this? Now, how about this? Because auntie is a term that was used by white people back in the day to call blacks, black women, and they use uncle for black men 
because he was still under Jim Crow and we they did not want to address you as sir or ma'am. That was too proper. But so blacks were not considered to be sirs and ma'am. They were aunties and uncles. And though and those were the good children who wanted to, who wanted to be respectful but didn't want to come out of the law and carry it on. So a lot of southern blacks don't don't want to be called auntie. Now let me go here, Miss Ma'am. What about ma'am? Now all of us were raised to be respectful and, and to say yes sir, yes ma'am. How many times have you heard bitches sit up there and tell you don't call me ma'am? That's old. Ain't nobody old. Ma'am, you just making me sound like my mama or my grandmama. But but we as black folks, we have learned to call Miss So and So. Yes ma'am, no ma'am, yes sir, no sir. And you want to say that because she said don't call me auntie, she's 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 disconnected from the black community. You see, y'all y'all make it way too much out of nothing, way too motherfuck out of nothing, okay? And that's what I'm having a problem with, because this discussion, like I said, I really and truly believe, and I could be wrong as two right shoes on the left foot. Y'all sit up here, and I really believe that you are baiting to get this woman to come and have this conversation with you, and if that's the case. I would rather you go on and scream it from the mountaintops. I would rather you put some money on a billboard and flush her out. But Oprah, me and you need to talk. I would rather you do that and to sit down there because see, then it'll be honest. It will really be honest because I, I get it. You've been hurt and you want to have some clarity. You want a sense of closure and you want your name vindicated because I hear you. When you say, and when you said on Steve Harvey, y'all said this to me privately, that I was right. But publicly, y'all won't even come out and do nothing. And they fucking with my money. They fucking with my family. I can't get, I can't feed my kids and, and this, that, and other. I got you there. I got you. But bitch, be honest about that. And stop all this motherfucking bullshit. Stop all this bullshit. Because every time you come dragging her name, we all get the same thing. And they tell you that in the comments. Oh, here we go again. You and motherfucking Oprah. And then you want to justify it by saying, oh, well, we got to have this conversation because auntie is a term of endearment. Auntie is showing love. Auntie, and then bitch, auntie is something that has been negative and derogatory from the jump as far as it's concerned. Now, listen, let me go here too with auntie. Okay? Because oftentimes, the kids now they saying it, they saying it to be ridiculous. Hey, auntie. Okay. Or how about when we see something that somebody on the internet or stuff, you see folks doing some stupid ass shit all the time. Somebody go get your auntie. Somebody go get your auntie. Go get your uncle, honey. You look at him making a fool of himself. I know I got criticized. I got raked across the coast because I had my big ass body with a with a champagne bottle covering my junk. And honey, that picture went viral. It went across. I got it. I got a hot ass mess and all of that. Somebody get your uncle. Oh, this is embarrassed and embarrassment to so much. Oh my God, I got all of that. Okay, so it's not used all the time in a positive atmosphere, or whatever. So if Oprah and Gail and Ava say, "Don't call me that," why is this a motherfucking issue? Huh? And yes. Yes, Oprah is 65. Gail is what, 63, 64? See up there too. So what? Yeah, they old. But they don't want they don't want you to call them old bitch because in their mind to say, Auntie, you trying to sit up there and come for me, bitch. Yeah. Sydney wanna tell myself we need to come out of the vanity of it. Bitch, fuck you. Fuck you. Tell my come out of the vanity of it and understand it's done in love. Do you know your history? Unc? Huh? Because Uncle Charlie, honey, that wasn't that wasn't no motherfucking term of endearment. Bitch, you was a motherfucking uh you was a a a, a, a stagehand. You was a help, Uncle Charlie. Okay? Or uh, how about Uncle Tom? Hmm? Huh? Unc? See? So what we have done. We have taken a lot of these words and we have wanted to sit down there and um, redefine them, which is fine, which is lovely. But let's take the word nigger. 
because now we want to sit down there and we have redefined that on, on many different occasions, but you still get folks say, don't you call me no nigga. And every black person tell every white person, you better not say it. I don't care how many motherfucking times I say it, it better not come out your mouth. So if nigga is, uh, is, has become a term of endearment, okay, and you got folks to sit up there and say, don't call me that, or you got the nerve to sit up there and tell somebody who can and can't say it, how come saying auntie is motherfucking wrong? Or disconnected from the community. Huh? I have a real bad problem with that. I have a, I have such a problem with that. But like I said, the main thing here, girl, is that you is trying to flush her out. So you can have this damn conversation. Please go have it. Please. God, you know what? Fuck it. Let me stop talking to you. Oprah. Oprah. Oprah Gail Winfrey. Born now, uh, January 29th, 1959. Is that right? I think that's right. Okay. Or is it 54? One of the two. You know who you are, Oprah Gale. Former talk show host and 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 uh, owner emeritus of the Oprah Winfrey Network. You, girl. You. Okay. Let me tell you something. Miss Singh, stop ignoring this hoe. Okay. Stop ignoring this bitch. And go up there and have that goddamn conversation. Now, you know you fucked up and you said some shit. Okay, you know that. So go clear the air. Go do it now. Because this shit is getting old. And at the same time, I'm, I, I, though I'm defending you, at the same time, I'm, I'm going to sit down there and get in your ass a little bit too. Because what you should have done was you got her motherfucking number, bitch. You got every, every connection in the book. If she ain't called you by now, you should have got on the motherfucking phone and did that your goddamn self. And sit up there and say, you sit up there and tell myself, you don't want to meet negative energy. Well, bitch, she sit up there putting your ass on fire all the time. You could have done this in private and nobody would have known the best and she would have shut her goddamn mouth by now. You understand? Now, just like y'all sitting up there, you do this goddamn Oprah Winfrey magazine every motherfucking month. You got wonderful tips up in there how to be a good friend, how to be this. You got wonderful tips up in there about handling business. business. Now, as a businesswoman, honey, she may not be able to fuck with your motherfucking coin like, like somebody else can, but bitch, she coming for your brand. Okay? She coming for your brand, and on top of it, how is it that you're going to have a work relationship with anybody? You can't just cut her loose because, bitch, she one of the ones that can sit down there and continue to have you negatively in the press. Now, you can ignore it all you want to, but, bitch, you're going to have to because you wronged her. And you may not have thought you did, but you wronged her. And one of the things you say on Super Soul Sunday, honey, is that in order for this to go right, you need to sit down there and take responsibility for it. You did that with Iyanla. You and Iyanla had that, that, that uh, conversation, the hard conversation or whatever. So now go have it with her. Go have it with her. Shut this heifer up. Shit. Okay? Shut her up. And at least give her the opportunity to say how the fuck she feels so she can get up off of her because she feels hurt by you. So go do that because damn it, all this shit back and forth, I'm sick of it. I'm so goddamn sick of this shit. And I'm so sick of, oh, uh, Monique, I'm so sick of you and this bullshit. Y'all brand the bullshit with this. This makes no motherfucking sense. Okay? Hell, remember back in the day, girlfriend was the word. Did her, hey, girlfriend. Hey, girlfriend. Okay, Gladys Knight would put it on. They tell me, girlfriend, you know you go too far. I tell them, not nearly far enough. So that was in the goddamn song. Okay? Why is this thing freezing? I'm so sick of this thing freezing. And I hope y'all heard me because the damn thing kept freezing. But, um, listen. Girlfriend was the damn term of endearment and carrying on. And we had a missed thing. Okay, became a term of endearment. It still is in the gay community. But hell, at one point in time, that was, that was considered to be derogatory. Cause to, to call you Miss Thing didn't was a was a was a diss, okay. To say diva, diva diva is a motherfucking is is a, is a derogatory term. But we have changed that to mean fabulousness. I know a diva was a bitch. A diva was somebody who was hard to. That was a hard person to get along with. Okay, that was somebody whose ego that superseded everything about consciousness. 
Okay? How about that? Huh? And what about this? You talking about terms of a deal? Come on, son. Remember when that was the hot? Come on, son. That wasn't nothing c c happy about that. That was just if that called you stupid. Because you said something that, that was just off the, off the chain stupid. Say about what? Come on, son. Okay, I gave you the look. Like, okay, bitch, you got you crazy. Okay, but that became a term of endearment. And, and when folks up there were saying, no, don't do that. It was okay for that, but because Oprah and 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 her flunky Gail sit up there and say, "Don't call me Auntie." Now we got it's World War Three, or it's a problem, or we got to challenge they black car because they ain't black enough, or they ain't down with the community. Bitch, get a life, do something here. You were so fabulous, honey. You got your residency going on in Los Angeles. I'm sitting up there jumping for joy for you because that's what you needed. You needed, you know, that was a good thing. And then you were first at that. You're the first black female comedian to do it, bitch. You setting the trail. The trend. Bitch, that's love. All motherfucking day love. But you fucking it up. Because now you got your personal shit with Oprah sitting down here that you got to make a conversation out of. Bitch, bye. Damn. This shit is, oh, Lord. Let me go to the comments chat. What y'all saying down here? Huh? What y'all saying? Okay. Let's see. Shay. Hey, Shay. You done came up in here. What's up, girl? I need a meal, bitch. You need to cook for me, honey. I need one of them. What was that? That damn peach pie thing that you made? Oh, yeah. Leo is up in here. Kevin. <laughs> hey, Kevin. Uh, Haji came up in here. You say what? Oh, and they fly. And the motherfucking roaches fly. Them damn, we call them water bugs, cause, and I don't know the technical name for them damn shits, but yeah. Haji said, well, what's the black community if we are all trying to live white? <laughs> okay. Mitchell, hey, Mitch, you came up here, you replying to, to Cole. You say, which God are you talking about? The Bible says, get enough to leave an inheritance for your children's children. Doing a dying at zero, what kind of legacy is that? Now, that's a good point. That's a good point. Lerana came up in here. Hey, Lerana. And uh, Taiwan is up in here. Okay. So what say y'all, honey, about these terms of endearment, honey? Okay, what say y'all? Because the biggest thing, I, I, I'm equating auntie with, with ma'am and sir. Because you want to talk about what we did as a black community and carrying on. To say ma'am and to say sir uh, was something that we were all raised with to show respect. Okay, to say auntie and carry it on now to go auntie that there is fad. This here is fad shit, and like I said earlier, honey, because it it got real popular because of Black Panther and Killmonger said, "My hi auntie." Okay, and, and that was a diss, really. He said it to 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 be cute. Okay, you just find out you part of the family, but yeah, now what? Hey auntie, you I know you don't like me, but what? Okay, that's what that is. Okay. That's what it came to be in the movie. And so now it done became a cute little cutesy. We got... Oh, oh shit. Hold on. Copy that. Wait a minute. He's in the mezzanine. Okay. What was that he said before? I forgot what he said before. I did it. Um, so, that there was that, honey. So we into this whole big old thing and see they offer they brand the bullshit again and I'm really over it, child. I'm so over it, it's ridiculous. And I wish that we would learn how to pick and choose the battles that we want to fight for real. Okay? And then what happened to personal choice? You know? If I say don't call me that, please don't. Okay? And I know sometimes you could get offended by it and carry it on. That may hurt. I know it happened to me one time. Y'all know I talk and I call everybody darling. Hey, darling. Hey, sugar. And this, that, and that. And I had a coworker of mine say that to me. He said, oh, he said, to me, don't do that. And when he said it, I thought he was playing. I said, child, you're playing. Come on now, because you know this how I talk. And not knowing or not hearing him, I did, I, and, and, 
I'm going to say this. I didn't want to hear him because I felt as though I'm just being myself. This, this is me. Oh, child. You know. But not hearing him and not understanding him, he stopped talking to me for like a month and a half. He would come in and get his keys or whatever. He stopped talking to me. And I had to earn and, 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 and revisit that. Kelton, yeah, I'm talking about you. Kelton had did that to me. And, and I, you know, I was so into my world and my thing or whatever to where I didn't hear him. And it became disrespectful because he was like, don't call me that, you know. And then, too, you talking about a straight man and a gay man. A gay man called a straight man darling, okay. And it just wasn't suiting. You know, most folks in, in the robot is water off a duck's back. But for him, it wasn't. So it was just, you know, that kind of thing. So it's like we have to learn how to allow people. We keep saying, you know, I have my choice. I have my preference. And I want to use the word preference and shit. So how come in this particular case, she prefers you not call her auntie? So why she got to sit up here and not have her black card in jeopardy? Oh, oh she not connected with the community. That's bullshit. Okay. It's bullshit. And y'all just trying to flush her out because you want to have this conversation. And until you prove me wrong, Hooker, that's where I am with that. Tanette Woodward says, hello all. Hey, Tanette, how are you, darling? Thanks for coming in. How did you say what? You say, uh, it's just like with my Angelou and the young girl that needed to be checked. You know when today's children are low-key mocking or mimicking you. Yes. Okay, now you know what? Now listen. Let me go here with that one, okay? Because she had to check that girl, but then later on, because a lot of folks felt that though Maya went too hard on the girl, but later on in that same episode, she went back and she apologized to her for being as harsh as she was. She said, you caught me off guard and I should not have come off that harshly, but she had to school that baby. No, sugar, you, do, you have not earned... Okay, or you have what, what, what was the word that she used? Hold on, damn it, I can't I, I can't think of the word that she used right now. But no, you have not earned the the responsibility of what to call me by my first name, honey. Oh no, 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 no. I am I am Doctor Andrew or I am Mrs. Angelou to you because I am part. I'm your teacher. I'm your mother. Your aunt. Your, you know, I'm all of those elders. Little girl, little girl. What have you done to say that you're one of my contemporaries? And that's just like, I can, oh, I cannot stand, I abhor, I deplore when I hear kids call their parents by their first name. The fuck is this? But I understand in certain households that's allowed. And, certain, and now there's certain reasons behind it. The reasons that I hear that I don't like are the ones where you got parents that's trying to be jazzy and want to sit down there and don't want to and don't want to be fucking parents. They want to sit down there and think that they just as young as the kids and shit. That's bullshit, bitch. Get a get a grip, okay? The other ones, you know, I, I get it. You know, I, okay, that that's your household. That's the come I don't come over there often, huh? Okay, because if I'm not, if I'm not in your house, then damn it, that's not gonna go. Okay, and I know when you come over to mine, bitch, no, you're not going to call your mama Lorraine in my presence. Not over here. You do it over at your house. She's going to be mama up in here. Okay, because that's how this household runs. Now, that's just me. Okay, and a lot of other people. <laughs> but we have got to learn how to get into this respect, and I'm so sick of us always want to challenge somebody's blackness. See, let me, let me talk to you conscious children for a minute. Okay? Because I need for y'all to really explain to me how is it that somebody who is losing their black card or whatever because they're not doing what you feel they should be doing. When did you become the police of what the black people supposed to be doing and carrying on? When did you become so that way to where now, let me go to the children because uh, y'all will get to, to, to Tyreek and all of them 
because I can't stand it when we when everybody talking about oh they cooning, they buck dancing, they bed witches, they care not. Y'all gotta go all out your way to call them all these fucking names because they doing shit that you feel as though they ought not to be doing as black folks. You always tying something to them, saying this is part of the white supremacist regimen and okay, y'all up under the spell of the white man and this, that, and that. What the fuck? How come I cannot have be somebody in my own mind to say this is what I'm doing? And since when is success being a part of the white supremacist regime? Huh? Because I'm successful, because I done did this with my coin, and because you feel I didn't come back and help out the ghetto and help out the poor folk the way you feel I should do it, then there's a problem. Huh? And like I said earlier, we don't know what these kids are doing in their private time, what they're doing, what charities they support or whatever, when we, we don't know what their bank account is. We don't know what they do in secret. We don't know what they do. We only know what's reported. Huh? Y'all talk about Tyler Perry. Don't, didn't, didn't nobody sit up there and give him, okay, if it had not been for the news, sitting up there saying that he paid off all them that Christmas stuff and went to the different Walmarts down here and paid off those layaways so folks could have a wonderful Christmas. Okay. Why? They didn't do that. Y'all didn't sit down there where he sat up there and paid for the funeral for, the, for some of those babies that got killed and carried on by the police officers. See, y'all can talk about his movies and stuff all you want to. You can talk about how ghetto he is all you want to. Now, how about that? That is one black man who is not part of the white regiment. He ain't part of the white supremacist uh, regime or whatever. But you fuck with him because you say his movies are not against black folks. He stereotyped black folks. But we know everybody in the motherfucking movies. Every character that he has portrayed or has d developed, we know somebody just like that in the black community. He has not gone to anybody else. In fact, Hollywood, he had to redo Hollywood because they were not going to distribute his shit. So he created it, he wrote it, he directed it, he distributed his own shit. But that ain't good enough for you, okay? That's not good enough. So how is it that folks can't be black enough and we always got to question their black card because they got coin and they're not doing what you feel they should do with it huh why all of this comes down to those particular questions so conscious children my conscious to my power to the people children okay my we got to build a nation children okay why is that equation not why have we not discussed that as part of uh, in part of trying to overcome this internalized shit that we go through and we're trying to build huh so Oprah don't want to be called motherfucking auntie don't call her she said it makes her cringe now that you're here for because I know some of y'all didn't even know that auntie had a history huh how many of y'all actually knew that it was a derogatory term how many of y'all absolutely knew that it was a term that white folks was using to, to, to be pseudo-respectful? Huh? Now because it's the fad, now it's, all, oh, it's, it's a term of endearment. And she turned her back on the community. She don't want to be connected. I, 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 I'm trying to understand this. I'm really trying to get into this, okay? Hold on, I got some folks that came up in here. Let me acknowledge y'all uh, that came up in here. Tony Jones, hey baby, we need to talk. Uh, Eric, hi, what's up, what's up, uh, Eric? Terrell that came up in here, Dominic is up in here. Terrell, you say what? You say they give silently. How about that, okay? Ah, uh, real, f okay, Frida, Alfreda Lenoir has joined the building, honey. Come on up in here, girl. Okay? I need y'all to get her book. It's called Go to Hell, honey. Ha! Huh? She say in her book, life shows up so you show up. Gets that. Okay? I quote ever since I read that, girl. I've been quoting it ever since. Terrell, you say what? Now Tyler owns the land where they captured and held black slaves. Now how about that? How about that? And he said that on the awards. He said, you know, that that was the land, honey, that, that this, that, that. He said, now one black man owns that land. How about that? Okay, how about that? 
that man has come through and has done what they said black folks can't do, and yet you power to the people, children still don't give him the props because all y'all see is Medea. Y'all see, oh, he done sold out because we got a black man in a dress. And they done sat down there and just questioning the masculinity of black men and the true black man and the Fuck you and that bullshit. Okay, fuck all that bullshit, child. And no, it ain't a sellout because we just trying to get the coin, honey. It ain't about that. It was a vehicle that was used because he's the only one that's in the dress like that. Everybody else was a strong black man in the motherfucking movies. He got all the other people to do it. To represent and carry it on. Now, I can question the content because I can sit down there and say, okay, Tyler's content, you know, he has a certain audience that he writes for. He writes for fat black church women, as far as I'm concerned, because they seem to always have low self-esteem. They always looking for a man, and they looking for a man to come in to build them up and this, that, and other, and they the queen, this, the queen, and blah, blah, blah. And then he always writes for the strong black woman and all that. That's lovely. Lovely, but it's only one-sided because of all his moves. The man always weak as shit. Okay, the, to be a strong black man. Yeah, he treats his woman right, but hell, look what he is. You know, now those are my opinions. And I know that can change. But at the same time, let's look at the body of the work. Because the motherfucker did what I ain't done yet. Shit, he, he is a, he is what, $50 million plus a million, you know, what he done did with his, with his life that he built. And it's not part of the, the white, the white, uh, uh, supremacist regime or whatever but yet we don't celebrate that but we mad at Oprah because she don't want to say she uh, don't don't call her auntie and we say Gail or well, Gail just her sidekick she don't know no motherfucking battle you know so so I'm having a problem with that so for, for the conscious community for those of you who so pro black for those of you who so pro this and so pro that who want to take everybody's black card from them, explain that to me. Let's have a real conversation. And I don't want no debate because this is not trying to go point for point. What I want is a conversation so I can hear you out. Let me see your point of view. So then, and then I can tell you my point of view because what I'm going to say is, okay, you got a point to a point because I don't understand this and I don't understand that. How come we can't find a happy medium here? Well, we can agree to disagree here because that one ain't going to change. I don't, I'm not budging, you ain't budging. But let's find a happy medium because what we have here is a vicious slur fight back and forth. Which is why Oprah won't sit down here and, uh, and address Monique, but she need to. You see what I'm saying? And all of that. Let me go back to the comments. What y'all saying? Okay. Uh, Tamika has come up in here. She says, exactly. Tracy, you say what? Uh, I knew nothing about what Mo said. I've always used auntie as terms of endearment. Okay. Hold on. That's a copy. Hold on, y'all. I can let me make my note because I gotta go put this back in the computer in a minute. He said lower level. Okay. All right. Ah. Uh, all right. Terrell, you say what? He did not waver and let the white companies take over what he believed uh, in his morals. They didn't want him to use the word Jesus. Tyler said no. He wanted to. He wanted it to stay. Okay, right. Okay, so he. Hey, there we go. Chris came up in here. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Okay, so here we have. These are these are. And, and it seemed like I done went round robin and and, and uh, put a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of shit up in here, but this is what we have, okay? This is what it all boils down to when we talk about uh, a simple "Don't call me auntie" has become a whole big old thing because you want to you want to now say that you want to take away her black card or she's not being a part of the community and this that, and the other that there is ridiculous. Okay, it is ridiculous. It is fucking ridiculous. Okay? And oftentimes, I still go back to the point of, why is it that every time somebody who has money, Tyler got his own money, Oprah got her own money, they have their friends and shit, Gail got her own money, Ava DuVernay got her own money, okay? 
Why is it that when folks come into their own money and they have and they built their wealth or whatever, now everybody want to go up to attack, and now you want to question how black they are and this that, and the other because they're not living in your communities anymore. They're not coming down and and being the rescue ranger number nine or captain saver hole that you think they ought to be. Y'all heard me say this before. I always equate this. I go back to that Fred Sanford, the Sanford and Son episode when Fred won the lottery. I always go back to that episode because it tickles me to death. Fred won the lottery for six hundred dollars, and y'all know in nineteen ninety five, six hundred dollars was like saying twenty five hundred now. Fred won the lottery. Lamont got on him because Lamont was like, "What you gonna do with all that money? You so selfish. You need to help somebody with that money." Blah 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 blah, and this that and the other, jackety smackety, okay. And then all of a sudden, now everybody coming out the woodwork because they need this, they need that, they need help. Oh, Fred. Oh, Fred, his sister like We didn't even know that at, outside of uh, Esther, we didn't even know that, uh, that that there was other sisters. Now the sister done came. She need $200 of her gallbladder. Okay. Then, um, uh, what was not Grady? Not Grady, the other one. I can't think of the child's name right now. Bubba. Bubba set up there. Now his truck car got told he needed two hundred dollars. Okay, and Fred the only one with the money. But why is it that because he got money, everybody thinks that he's supposed to just give their money? Good night, sweetie. Why is that? Every time, listen, y'all see when folks hit the lottery now. There's a lot of states to where they have to go public. They have to go public because of the. Uh, the public records uh, law or whatever. So you got the news that can on put your 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 face say you done won the millions and millions of dollars and carried on. Now they done made you a target. That I, I y'all heard me say this before. That happened what two years ago now, here in Georgia. The boy won the fucking lottery for umpteen millions and shit. Then he sit up there and they killed his ass. He got robbed and killed. Why? Because the news put his ass on TV, and he was. A, why do we feel that folks, because folks got money, they supposed to give it away? You ain't earned it. You ain't said, you ain't even went up there and said, can I bother with you? If you do this, I could do that. You, we didn't even, you, oh, you got it. You supposed to just give it. Because what would Jesus do? <laughs> Pardon my indulgence. Oh, this mag, honey, that's for you. I love when he does that. Okay. Let me see something. I got. I, let me go back to the comments. Let me go back to the comments. Paul, I came up in here. Hey, Paul, Terrell, you say what? I agree. Don't call me big man. Ha! See, don't do that because I, it doesn't bother me. But it, I get that too because I'm big and tall and carrying on. Hey, big man. Hey, chief. Big chief. You know. Yeah. Don't call me big man. And it's what blacks. It, and it's it, and it's that blacks do that. Why not address me as sir, mister, excuse me, I'm not your unk or pops. <laughs> I had that conversation earlier. I had uh, somebody, uh, Brian said he don't like being called pops either because she, I mean, he said, hell, don't make that sound old, you know, and carrying on. But Monique and Sydney want to sit there and say, oh, let's take the vanity out of it because that's a term of endearment, honey. You need to take the fuck all that, okay? Dominic, you say, well, I think people have a, per uh, a perceived perception of how our black celebrities are supposed to act until they assert themselves, and this is not who I am. I may lift you and me up, but don't think I have to conduct myself according to how you feel I should. How about that? How about that? Okay. Uh, Pernell, hey baby, me and you need to talk too. Thanks for coming up in here. Chris, you say what? I agree. Ha! Huh? Chris say, well, everybody has a name. Use it. <laughs> How about that? Okay, everybody has a name, honey. Use it. But let me go back to that because I'm glad you said sir. Okay, I'm glad you said sir. Because that's another one of those things that have become one of the little persnickety little things. Because see, now, when we say the word sir, usually it's done condescendingly. Hello, sir. Because somebody got a little too. And, 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 and to say it now, it, it, it's, it's being, you know, persnickety and things that you're trying, to, you're trying to make a point. 
I don't have to call you by your name, sir. You you know what I'm saying? So that's what usually happens. Okay, Tony, you say what? Good night. Let's talk this weekend. Bet you got my. I'm gonna text you my number. Okay. So good night, baby. Thanks for staying up with me. Yeah. What are you doing up this late anyway? <laughs> I just thought about that. Mm. Um. But nonetheless, that there is that. So. We have got to learn, darlings, that just because we disagree, we could disagree all day long, babies. That's not the issue. The issue is not, not to, uh, that we disagree. We've got to learn how to sit down there and make people wrong because we disagree. They ain't wrong. You may feel as though they are because they're not, they're not in your world or on the same page as you. And yes, I understand that's an emotional thing. Okay, that could be very emotional. But when you sit down there and think about it or whatever, is this something that's going to sit there and cost you a friendship, cost you this, cost you that? You know what I'm saying? Step back, take a breath, understand where you are. If, it, if love is real, you guys are overcoming the little disagreements. But when it becomes the way you disagree and then you petty. Because let me use that word. I haven't used that word in a little minute. Because I think now, let me get there. Because I really believe that, that a lot of what Monique and Sydney are doing can be classified as petty. Okay, because like I said, I truly believe that every time they get to talking about Oprah or any time, any time they talk about anybody who had wronged them, that's a part of their whole shit. The Oprah, Tyler, Lee Daniels, all that bullshit. Anytime one of them become a part of the news, I really believe that anytime they put their mouth on it, it becomes petty because they're trying to snuff them out and force them to have a conversation so they can go public. I don't think that they need that. I don't think that they need that. I think that that should be kept private. And if you've got to sit down there and do something, do it the proper way. If you feel as though you want to call them out, I have, I, no, I, I ain't going to say I have not heard her do that in an interview because she's done it in a few interviews. When Monique's up there and say, okay, yeah, let's entertain the conversation. She called Oprah and said, Oprah, let's do this on Super Soul Sunday. You get all of us, me, you, Steve, Cheryl, Tyler, Get them all, and we'll do this on a Super Soul Sunday, and let's have that conversation. Okay, you know, but the question is, are you ready for that conversation, bitch? Because you want to go public like that. Are you ready for it? Because see, then who gonna moderate it? Because I really say, I really say that she, Iyama, and Oprah need to all sit and let let Iyama moderate, and let them sit down there and go and go toe to toe. And so that way she could sit down there and get what she need off of her goddamn chest and this shit could be over. You know what I'm saying? It could be over. <sighs> but that there is that. I've said my piece about this shit right now, honey, because, it, yeah, it's just a mess. If y'all don't know what I'm talking about, go up on YouTube and you will see, go look, go look it up, Monique and Sydney's uh, open relationship, and it's called Oprah Gail Ava. Don't call me auntie. Listen to that. And you'll understand. I Like I said, I didn't listen to the whole thing. I read some of the comments and carried on because, like I said, that team Monique, you know, they, they want a neck roll and carry on. Well, Oprah oh, wasn't my auntie anyway. She she just, uh, she done got up there and, and, and got her little money and thing. And now she feeling though she better than everybody. She ain't got to do shit. She ain't got to. And all the little craziness. It's just a bunch of bullshit. Okay? It's just a bunch of bullshit. And people want to sit down there. Oh, Monique, they, they did you wrong. They should have gave you that money. Everybody here money, but they're not looking at the fight. They're not looking at what Monique wrote, how she was wrong and carrying on. They're not looking at all of that. Everybody sit up there and say, oh, bitch, they did you wrong and blah, 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 blah. Okay? So, go listen to that. And, and 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 then make your own conclusions because see here what, what I'm offering here is simply how it hit me. Now y'all could disagree with what I say and carry on. You may agree with her. You may think that this that she may she's out of touch with the community. But y'all, I need for y'all to explain to me how. Explain to me how. When, perhaps she understands the history of the word. Perhaps she because she's from Mississippi. Okay, I grew up in that era where white women were calling were calling folks black. I mean, calling black women auntie because they didn't want to call them miss or missus or madam or ma'am. Huh? 
How about that? How about that? Let's understand that. Okay? Let's understand that. Perhaps, perhaps that may be where she's coming from. And we don't know that because we haven't heard her voice. Now, Monique did say something. She said, she said what, what baffled her or what hurt her feelings was that when she said that to the interviewer, wherever it was said, that nobody seemed to question that. Nobody questioned why she didn't want to, why don't, don't why not? How come you don't want nobody to call you that? She said nobody questioned that and that floored me. And okay, I'm going to give her a point for that one. Because perhaps if somebody did, then we would have an answer. You know, a, a, a better answer than it just irks her and carry it on. You know what I'm saying? I, well, I won't say a better answer. Let's say a more comprehensive answer. That's the deal. A more comprehensive answer. Okay? Wait a minute. Let me stand up. This goddamn chair is working on my ass, honey. Ugh. They done gave us these little stupid ass bitches and shit. Ugh. They really want us to stand, child. But okay. My eye itching again. Y'all know, child, every time I'm on this live, I want me rubbing my nose and this goddamn eye. Ugh. Ooh, okay. So, um, oh damn that light. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, here we go. So, that there is that, child. Let me see. Dominic, what you saying? Uh Chris said, I just love you. I love <laughs> thank you, baby. I love you right back. Thank you. Uh, Dominic says, Monique need to be careful of, of that interaction with Oprah because I truly believe that uh, it ain't what she won't. Uh, it ain't what she won't because Oprah got receipts for everything she's going through in this industry. Okay. Which I guarantee it ain't what she won't. Ha! Okay, don't come for it. Okay. Your eye is red. Put a cold towel or a cold napkin on it. I just love you. Thank you, baby. Is it red for real? Okay, then. Oh, okay. I got my eye drops, too. That's what is. It's probably dry, and I'm not paying attention to it, and I'm rubbing it because it's itchy. But I got my 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 um my drops, child. My, my, uh, my tears. My artificial tears. Because they told me don't use regular eye drops or the saline. Just use the artificial tears. So I'm like, oh, okay. So that be that. Let me get to get myself together, honey, because I'm on here and things. I got to finish my paperwork and stuff because we'll be switching out in a moment. I'm doing a double today, child, so I'll be here till 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. So there may be another one coming because I still have not addressed the uh, the controversy over, um, um, what's the child? The Disney shit. The Little Mermaid and Carrie on. I have not addressed that, and I want to get into that and um, a couple other things. So let me get up off of here, honey, and, and thank you all, thank all of you, I was going to say you guys, but <laughs> thank all of you for coming in and, to, and for joining with me and carrying on. If you love me, tell a friend, baby, if you hate it or hate me, tell an enemy. But do know this, one way, shape, style, form, or fashion, everything that I'm doing will what? Move forward, okay? I invite you again, please go to my website, www.dishingtea.com. Like, share, and subscribe to all of wherever you see me, honey. Like it, share it, and subscribe to it or whatever. So I'm t I got to get my numbers together, child. Mm. Okay. I want these numbers to go up so I know folks like me or whatever. So I can, so I can sit down there and say I have an internet presence. <laughs> Anywho, honey, in the event, let me, let me, you see a couple of drops, child. Let me get to getting, honey. On that note, baby, I love all of you. And we'll talk together. I will talk. Uh, I can't even really get it out. See, I'm talking too much now because I'm rambling. So let me do this. I'll talk with you guys soon, okay? Ciao. Woo -hoo -hoo.